All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. It's uh, just about the end of 2021, so it is time for our energy and uh, minerals, metals, resources forecast for 2022. We're now about to be two years into the future. So, starting with uh, the largest subject, obviously oil, petroleum, particularly of importance, uh, demand, I am expecting to exceed uh, pre-2020 levels to get up to and over 102 million barrels per day as it has uh, continued its recovery over the course of this year and is almost back at that level. In fact, uh, some second and third world nations have continued growing and thus their consumption levels resumed going up. It's primarily the first world and western nations uh, that are still suppressing themselves and holding themselves back uh, with shutdowns and stuff. Most of the developing and partway developed world uh, can't really afford that luxury, so uh, they uh, sort of just kept on going. And I expect global oil demand uh, at some point during the year to get up to between the range of 103 and 105 million barrels per day of demand. And in terms of overall average, supply should just be able to uh, keep meeting it, averaged out over the course of time, that is, as uh, OPEC is restoring its oil production. And uh, at minimum, that should eventually add up another 1 million barrels per day. Plus, Russia will most likely be getting up into the upper 11s uh, towards their maximum capability by the end of this coming year. So that would be another plus one. Uh, the U.S. should be recovering up to between 12 and a half and 13 by the end of the year so that's roughly another plus one and then there's the several hundred thousand barrels a day kazakhstan should uh, hopefully recover plus uh, whatever additional recovery venezuela undergoes if they continue upwards and uh, if further sanctions get removed from iran iran still has quite a bit of production that uh, they should be restoring and guyana should be bringing its uh, second field or second batch of fields on this coming year uh, which should add uh, a couple hundred thousand barrels a day as well. And of course, Iraq. I almost forgot Iraq. Iraq should be going up by between half a million and one million barrels per day. Price-wise, uh, depending on how things fluctuate uh, at individual points, uh, oil could go up higher than it hit this year. It uh, could go up into the 90s. I expect probably it should stick to, at least for this coming year, a range of between 60 and $95 a barrel. Though again, as I should have said at the beginning of the video, uh, all of this, uh, all forecasts and everything are, are assuming that no, you know, extreme events happen. No major wars, no asteroid strikes or anything of the sort. And in terms of a few individual countries' demand levels, uh, China, assuming that uh, they get their whole power situation back under control, uh, China should continue uh, chasing the U.S.'s numbers. And uh, next year, if everything gets back under control, they should uh, exceed their new record high of 17 and uh, possibly get up to 18 or so. And India, I also as well see potentially getting up over 6 million barrels per day. Indonesia had recently, several months back, uh, hit a new record of 2 million barrels per day. Although uh, their consumption level hasn't uh, remained very stable this coming year, they should probably break that again by a little bit uh, like they've been doing each year. So probably uh, bump up to 2.1 at their high point maybe. In Brazil, I'm 50-50 on, but they stand a good chance of probably hitting 3 or just under it. And then uh, Nigeria should uh, probably exceed 600,000 sometime this coming year. And the Philippines were really close to uh, half a million, so they should almost definitely uh, get up over 500,000. Now, outside of oil, uh, into natural gas. Uh, primarily, the, uh, primarily, the main forecast concern is uh, the immediate months going into 2022. The European nations, because of the extreme deficit in wind and sunlight over the summer, and uh, the now ongoing deficit of wind at the present moment, which uh, reduced their renewable power generation, which uh, caused them to fall back onto emergency gas-fired power generation, thus increasing uh, their natural gas demand. Since uh, they've all been shutting down their coal plants, except for Poland, and uh, Germany's been shutting down its nuclear plants and its coal plants, because Germany, along with many European nations, actually seem pretty intent on self-destruction. 
but uh, that exceeding natural gas demand up until uh, the start of the winter months caused their inventories to be well below where they should be and the lack of renewable power generation at the moment causing them to need to use more gas for power generation uh, along with the uh, usual winter heating demand which has actually been a bit higher uh, the first few weeks although it's uh, it's leveled off a bit now uh, has caused their natural gas demand levels uh, to be even higher than their normal winter averages would be which has been dropping their inventory levels quite fast which were already below where they should have been for the start of winter so depending on how the rest of the winter goes uh, several European nations stand uh, risk of getting into dangerously low natural gas inventory levels like down to 20 or even 10 percent such nations include germany the netherlands belgium denmark romania and austria now outside of uh, energy or at least outside of hydrocarbons into metals lithium as electric vehicle production keeps ramping up uh, lithium demand uh, keeps going up and up right with it along with the whole uh, idiotic uh, grid scale battery storage idea so lithium prices have been marching and marching and marching and marching marching on and on and on after having collapsed uh, down into single digits uh, they got back up into the lower teens uh, last year and this year they marched their way up into the 20s past their previous record which was in the upper 20s up over 30 dollars per kilogram and are now up into the mid 30s on their way towards 40. this year i have almost no doubt uh, that they will uh, probably exceed 50 and even 60. so i would expect on average for them to uh, maybe land up around 65 or upwards of it so from the mid 30s into potentially the mid 60s so basically am i expecting it to roughly double its price or uh, come a bit short of doubling its price yes as uh, the world wants to head down that pathway and uh, those will be the consequences of heading down that pathway silver rising in demand uh, from a number of things growing electronics demand as rising nations continue to rise into higher income levels increasing additive use in soldering as uh, lead is being removed and its ever-expanding demand source solar panels yes silver is required for solar panels uh, regardless of which type uh, whether it's the regular type the cadmium to low ride higher efficiency type or the multi-layer super high efficiency type which uh, requires germanium which is an even rarer substance whichever type of solar panel they all use silver it's about uh, one third of an ounce per every square meter of solar panel so as silver demand uh, continues going up silver prices are definitely going to uh, rise to meet it silver prices have been back down in the lower 20s after uh, some additional mining production was brought back online from countries like australia that cut back uh, activities in literally everything including mining in response to the health situation so in 2020 there was a bigger dip than expected in silver supply although uh, global silver production has already peaked and would have continued dropping anyways but 2020 saw that exacerbated a little bit uh, but there has been a bit of a cushion this year as uh, some of that production has bounced back a little bit however as the inevitable decline continues going on uh, that's obviously not going to hold so we've seen silver prices uh, in recent times reach up towards 30 uh, this year at one or more points uh, they will probably spike up and over into the 30s copper just barely broke its price record this year uh, getting up into the 480s i think four dollars and 80 cents or so this year as copper demand continues going up uh, from ongoing construction in rising nations from renewable energy project expansion uh, and from uh, expanding electric vehicle production as the average electric vehicle uh, whatever whichever category or whichever scale uses about five times as much copper as a regular car or a regular truck and global copper production from copper mines uh, hasn't peaked but it has been relatively flat or so it's kind of plateaued for the last few years so that's not really permitting of a uh, ongoing demand jump so copper this coming year 2022 uh, I definitely expect is uh, going to jump up a few times and uh, almost certainly exceed five dollars per pound for the first time ever probably on a higher spike I could definitely see it getting up to between five and a half and six dollars nickel the uh 
other super critical uh, battery metal and also needed in growing amounts uh, just for regular steel in uh, construction and infrastructure this coming year I expect it uh, this this particular price surge to exceed the price surge of this year which saw it a couple times get uh, a bit of ways up into the 20s uh, this coming year it should probably surge uh, upwards into the upper 20s towards 30. I don't think immediately it will start exceeding uh, $30 per kilogram or $30,000 per ton uh, just yet. That absolutely is coming uh, this decade in particular. Uh, at, at some point I expect it to probably get up all the way to like somewhere between 80 and 120. And rare earth metals. Uh, what's going to happen this coming year? Well, as their demand continues absolutely flooring the accelerator from uh, renewable energy projects and electric vehicles, they are most likely going to be breaking their price records. Uh, Terbium is already uh, three quarters of the way up to its price record. Its price record was like $4,400 per kilogram. Uh, it's been up in the lower 3000s as of most recently. Neodymium and praseodymium uh, I forget which one is which, but I believe the records were one uh, $450 and the other uh, something lower like 250 but they're both around like 200 right now as their demand really picks up from the whole energy transition thing that's not going to work out. Again, I'll put a link in the corner uh, and in the top comment of the video. I did all the math showing why it's not going to work. There is a combination of things put together that actually can uh, quote-unquote save civilization in a way at least. Uh, I will eventually make a video uh, describing the actual you know like optimal combination of things what we should actually be doing and as far as I've seen at least uh, nobody has uh, actually ever been arguing for the the actual like correct arrangement and combination of things. As with many things uh, people collectively basically just formed uh, two very bad options, very bad pathways, and turned it into a this or that divide. But we'll, we'll get to that in the, uh, in the video when I eventually get around to actually making it. But the uh, rare earth metals, uh, several of them should be breaking their records this coming year. Uh, terbium, I don't know, maybe it'll even uh, floor up past like $5,000 a kilogram. But obviously for the exact playout, we'll have to wait and see. And that's it for my uh, list of particular expectations for the coming year of how things might play out. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. The uh, PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can, obviously. An enormous thank you to anybody who does. But no matter what becomes of me, may God bless you all, and I will see you all around next time.